If we want to create a sense of realism in our drawings, then effective representation of shadows is a really important part of that because intuitively we know shadows should be there and they do so much for helping define the lighting, the sunshine or the darkness that we have in our scene. But how do we do our shadows in the tricky area of the ground, particularly when the ground is not a smooth surface? So I want to use this really lovely scene, I think, of these, these three trees that I took in Tasmania on a recent holiday to look at how do we capture the effect when we draw freehand with ink of shadow on the ground. But first we have to capture the effect of these trees. I've used a 0.3 millimeter pen for the closest tree and then a 0.2 millimeter pen, um, or it could have even been a 0.1 for the further back two trees. And I'm just using a few dots and dashes to indicate where I think the shadows are going to be. I certainly don't want to draw any lines because they're going to be pretty obvious at the end. And I'm in no place right at this point to know whether there'll be any lines as such for the ground. Firstly, we want to create some realistic tree effects. Trunks, again, often end up being neglected because the focus, the energy, and maybe the nervousness all goes on the foliage. But depending on the tree, the actual trunks can be a very important part of the subject. And depending on the cropping, the composition, even more so. I think one of the important things in trying to get a sense of realism is to get some sense of the individuality of the tree trunk. And the individuality comes from the way it bends and twists and also the bark and sometimes the color or any combination of these. And with these trees particularly, what I particularly liked when I saw the, the reference was the way the light is just coming around some of the edges. And this happens sometimes because the light actually falls just around what we can see. Sometimes it's bouncing light being reflected, but there often is a very, very slight aura is probably a good way of putting it, just on the very edges of tree trunks, or at least on one side. And so as we progress this drawing, pay attention to the hatching on the trunks. Try to make sure as the drawing develops and as the values, the darknesses develop, that we match up light, mid and dark values in a way that, in a way that make the tree trunks easiest to see. And so I'm starting with a 0.2 millimeter pen. So a slightly lighter pen now to do the hatching marks. And that's so that these lines don't overwhelm the lines I've already put on the tree to be representative of the bark, which is a different type of bark or different looking bark at the very base of the tree. Not uncommon with uh, some Australian eucalypts. So I'm trying to give a slight curvature to represent the cylindrical shape and help to convey the effect that this is, this is a round three-dimensional form. It's not a cut out two-dimensional shape. And try and have these lines sort of roughly follow perspective angles for this. And now I'm coming down on this top. I was very careful at this stage not to overdo these lines. I knew that these, this front tree was going to have the darkest lines, but I, I worked hard at keeping them relatively light. And you'll see me all throughout the drawing, going back to this part of this tree or this part of another tree, and just making an adjustment either across the whole tree or just on one side, because you'll find that I would have done something very close value wise, very close to that part of the tree trunk. And therefore I need to adjust the tree trunk values to make it read better. But now I'm um, back to the 0 0.2 millimeter pen and I use, I'm pretty sure a 0 0.1 millimeter pen to do the hatching on these two further trees because I also want to create a three-dimensional depth 
of the, the trio of, of trees. So I want one to feel closer and the other two to feel like they sit back. And things that are further back, we don't see quite with as much intensity or as much sharpness or as much detail. And so a lighter pen and a lighter touch in the way we make our marks and the detail that we choose to include helps to create that effect of being further away. So we use our pens and our marks to create the effect of distance that's there in life, but not particularly in a two-dimensional photo such as this. And I hope that um, when you look at my drawing right now, you, you would think that, yes, this, this tree branch that crosses in front of the other, even at this stage in the drawing, certainly looks like it's in front in a way that the drawing doesn't and it's in, in a way that the photo doesn't. And it's always important with photos to study them carefully, work out what's in front of what, how much of a gap is there, and that we work, that we work our drawing techniques to create the three dimensions, the depth that, and the form that's been lost in our reference. Starting to do some of the, the grass now. I didn't want to do the grass before I'd done some of the trees. Again, because I, wasn't, I wanted the, to be able to go, go referencing the value on the tree trunks in terms of darker or lighter. Now, if you have a good look at what I'm doing, besides following the reference as carefully as I can, I'm doing lots of, lots of small vertical hatching. When I look at the photo, what I see is that on the top edge of the shadow, where there's blades of grass sticking up, those blades of grass are catching the shadow. So we get um, a seesaw effect. But if I look on that same bit of shadow on the lower lines, I'll actually see that the blades of grass coming up are catching the light of the sun. And so they stand out with a sort of shaggy effect against the shadow that's above them or further behind them on the ground. And that's the effect I need to, to work out marks for to create on my drawing. Now, it would have been very quick to do the shadows by just doing a series of horizontal lines that follow the patterns of the branch. And I've done that many a time myself. And that's, that's quite a good method when the trees have concrete around them or very, very flat ground. But we want to capture the sense of the grass, of the fairly lush grass, because that's part of the overall appeal of this scene. That there's all this inviting grass that looks soft and comfortable to sit on. And so we need to capture that effect and horizontal lines will make flat and smooth what's vertical and shaggy. So we need to create that effect. And the question is, how large then, how long do we make our marks? And I think it's important that they not be too long, but it's also very important that as they go further back, as we're, as we're drawing grass further and further back, the grass, the individual blades of grass become harder and harder to see. And they certainly become shorter and shorter in terms of the marks we need to make. So we need to capture that foreshortening. As the, as the ground slopes away from us, as it moves away, there, then everything we see, which, is for, which for a good distance is just the grass, becomes visually compressed. It's like a row of windows on a building. As you move along the wall, the windows get narrower, the gaps between them get narrower and narrower and narrower. Well, that same effect happens on the ground as we look forwards. And anything on the ground becomes like the windows getting narrower and narrower. The blades of grass are getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And so you can see with the marks I'm making now, they're much smaller marks. And there are more dots. And we're not seeing much else. And then just a few dots in the, in the far distance that really represent, well, anything at all. They don't actually represent something in the photo, but they just help give a sense of transition of distance, which I think is effective in creating the effect of distance at this point. Those dots are the link between the shadow that's 
the highest bit of shadow we see behind the trees and then the kind of horizon of the hill, so to speak, where we get the dark shadows at the base of the trees on the far side. And this drawing took me about 60 minutes to do. And if you're finding this video helpful, please hit the like button. If you've got friends who draw, then why not share the video with them? And as always, I would love your comments. I'd love to hear what you think of this technique for drawing shadows. So now I'm doing the trees on the far side. Now, the further back we go, generally, values, darknesses, get less and less. However, for this scene and for the effect I want to create, keeping this far distance fairly dark, quite dark in fact, I think will be a better overall effect because I'm, I'm wanting to really um, ramp up the, the feel of light on the edge of these trunks. And so very, very dark, very black shadows. So very dark, very black shadows will create a, a sense of brighter light by contrast. So here I am now just doing these. Apologies for the way a fair bit of the picture, uh, particularly the grass, just popped into view a moment back. I was interrupted in my filming by a member of the family and I forgot to turn the video back on. But it was really more of the same of what we'd been doing, what we'd been looking at. And so being careful with my lines is important for this. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was doing the darkness on the left side of the trees, uh, one, one pen stroke was carelessly done. I wasn't paying attention at that moment. I was thinking of something else and one line went past that, which was annoying. And then I later dropped that whole line by about a millimetre, which did actually absorb half or slightly more than half of the line going into the white space. So it just helped to minimise. So it just helped to minimise the... Ah, no, I'm doing it now. That's where I did, did it. And so the line that goes down into the hill is not as noticeable. And it does, I think, give a fairly reasonable definition this is why I always say, don't get too upset when we make mistakes because, because there is almost always some way we can adjust our line work elsewhere to compensate, or make it look not so bad, take attention away from it. You'll notice with the shadows that as they go further back, I, uh, now I'm just adjusting the shadow to make it a bit darker in this front tree. Get darker with uh, a few applications right at the end now. But in doing the grass, I'm also careful not to let it all be an even um, effect of darkness of value. I really want to keep variation because that's the way the light bounces and that's the way the grass looks. So I want to capture that sense of, of, a, of a varying light and dark shades rippling through the shadows that we have. And the trunk shadows are darker than the leaf shadows, which are the further behind ones. So I wanted to capture that as well. But as always, it's a case of very careful observation to work out what am I seeing? What's the effect of the objects from this distance? Now, how do I draw that effect? I don't think of grass at all. I think of a visual effect that I'm seeing around the trees that changes from the foreground to where the trees start in the background very much. And what marks will capture that effect? G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Hope you found this helpful. I really enjoyed drawing this. Sometimes I'm particularly pleased with the drawing and I gotta say, this is one of them. Why not give it a go? It's also great practice for drawing tree trunks, the topic of yesterday's video. And of course, you'll find this reference on my channel community page. But whatever you draw, However you draw it, shadows or not, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.